Oh, man. Micah 5, verse 5, slide 1, 2, 9. This man shall be the peace when the Assyrian shall come into our land. And when he shall tread into our palaces, then shall we raise up against him seven shepherds and eight principal men. This is what my prayer is. My prayer is, I believe we're coming into a time of the greatest division America has ever known. I believe it. I am no longer praying unify America. I am now saying unify the states in America that want to align with you. My yeah. God. Because I believe, and this is where we get sheep nations from, I believe that there are sheep nations. I believe that depending on how you and I steward Houston, Houston can become a sheep state. Yeah. Texas can become a sheep state depending on how we steward it. Because not every nation is going to join the Antichrist. That's the good news. There are sheep nations that are not going to align with the spirit of the Antichrist. Praise God. That's good news. Assyria is modern day Iraq, by the way. Let's go. Let's go quickly, quickly to slide 136. Now, <laughs> I want to tell you something. So fascinating, by the way. Christians are waiting for the return of Christ. Jews are waiting for the coming of Messiah. Muslims are waiting for the coming of Al-Mahdi. Christians are waiting for the coming of the return of Christ. Jews are waiting for the coming of the Messiah. Muslims are waiting for the return of the 12th Imam called the Al-Mahdi. <clears throat> this is what many Christians don't know. Christians are waiting for the return of Christ, the Messiah. Jews are waiting for their Messiah, who most Jews are, unless you're a Messianic Jew like Sid Roth and others, Jonathan Khan, who believes in Christ. Most, most of Jew Israel is a secular state. It's not even religious. And so there, many of them, the Orthodox Jews, are wailing at that wall because they believe that Jesus is going to come through that place. So they're praying every day, Jesus, or their Messiah. They don't call him Jesus. <coughs> In Israel right now, there are many who actually believe the Messiah has come. The Messiah who we call Jesus, they believe he's already come. The Muslims are waiting for the Al-Mahdi. The Al-Mahdi is their Messiah. He's their last Imam. And Muhammad's wa Muhammad was quoted as saying, his name will be my name and his father's name, my name, my father's name. In other words, he believes, Muhammad believed that the last imam that's going to come into the earth and do all these amazing things, their Messiah is going to be called Muhammad. That's what they believe. Next slide, please. <coughs> um Salama, his wife, Muhammad married a young girl. We're not going there today. When? So when the Mahdi appears, Allah will cause such power of vision and hearing to be manifested in believers that the Mahdi will call to the whole world from where he is with no postman involved and they will hear and even see him. Next slide, please. And he had power, Revelation 13 verse 15, to give life unto the image of the beast, that the image of the beast should both speak and cause as many as would not worship the image of the beast to be killed. Next slide, please. Let's look at this. Abu Sayyid is quoted as saying, the messenger of Allah, he's one of us. Next slide, please. The messenger of Allah said, the Mahdi is of my lineage. Next slide, please. No, no, stay there. Go back. Look at this. So look at this. The Mahdi is of my lineage with a high forehead and a long, thin, curved nose. He will fill the earth with fairness and justice as it was filled with oppression and injustice and he will rule the world for seven years. Seven years. Hello. You, you got to read the Quran and the Bible like this. It'll change your worldview. This is where I began to think, what if our Antichrist is their Mahadi? Holy cow. Woo. Next slide. Let's look at it. 70 weeks are determined. Daniel 9, 24. That's seven years. Good. Next slide. Let's move on. Yep. Yep. 
Okay, Jesus is unique for being the only prophet in Islam who neither married nor had children. Yep, mm -hmm. next slide. Uh, this is it. Muslims believe, this is Muslims, this is what Muslims believe, that Jesus is going to return to the earth near the day of judgment to restore judgment and defeat the al masal ad jahal sorry, that means the false messiah. That means the one we're worshipping, they believe that Jesus is going to come to destroy the one we're worshipping. Catch this. Look at this. This is, this is Surah verse four, chapter 4 in the Quran. And I bet you never thought you'd come to church. And we, okay. Okay. Look at this. And they said, we have killed the Messiah, Jesus, son of Mary, the messenger of God. This is what it says. They did not kill him, nor did they crucify him. Though it was made to appear like that to them. Those that disagree about him are full of doubt, with no knowledge to follow, only supposition they certainly did not kill him. On the contrary, God raised him unto himself. God is almighty and wise. So they believe we messed up because they believe that Jesus wasn't crucified for the sins of the world. They believe God took, Allah took Jesus to heaven and made it appear like he was crucified. Okay, next slide. Allah's apostle said, the hour will come, will not be established until the son of Mary descends, that's Jesus, among you as a just ruler. Oh, this is powerful. He'll break the cross, kill the pigs, as you and I and the Jews, abolish Jizzy attacks, money will be in abundance so that nobody will accept it as charitable gifts. Mm. Let's look at the Bible. Next slide, look at this. And Daniel 8.25, And through his policy also he shall cause craft to prosper in his hand, and he shall magnify himself in his heart, and by peace shall destroy many. Whoa. Peace destroying many. Who destroys people by peace? That sounds like politicians. <laughs> By peace shall destroy many. And he shall stand up against the prince of princes, but he shall be broken without hand. Just think about this. Now they're waiting for an Ahmadi who's going to bring seven years of peace on the earth. And Daniel 8.25 prophesies that somebody is coming who is going to declare peace upon the earth, but through peace, he's going to cause destruction. Next slide. Are you getting something? Yes. Let's look at Surah 5. They have certainly disbelieved who say that Allah is Christ, the son of Mary. Say then, who could prevent Allah at all if he had intended to destroy Christ, the son of Mary, or his mother, or everyone on earth? And to Allah belongs dominion, heavens, earth, whatever, whatever, whatever. Next slide. For there shall be false Christ and false messiahs who shall deceive the many and if possible deceive the elect. This is the signs of Matthew 24 of the coming of Christ, right? Next verse. Wherefore, look at this, wherefore, if they shall say unto you, Behold, he is in the desert. He's telling us where this Antichrist is going to come from. He's not talking about Arizona. So behold, they'll say, if he's in the desert, don't go, don't pack your bags. Because the Bible says these false messiahs, these false prophets are going to come and they're going to perform convincing signs. Yes. If it were possible, they deceive the very elect. I watched a Muslim imam cast out a devil in the name of Allah and the demon came out. Oh, yeah. Holy cow. Signs. Signs that the Bible says it's going to deceive many Christians. If he goes, if he says I'm in the desert, he says don't go. And if they say he's in the secret chambers, believe it not. Next slide, look at this. The, the word desert is Eremos. It means to the east or south of Palestine. What's east or south of Palestine? Let's look what's east or south of Palestine. Next slide. Next slide. Mecca. Mecca, south of Palestine in Saudi Arabia. This whole war, by the way, one reason, Israel and Saudi Arabia. Saudi Arabia will be a gate for darkness and the gospel to, their, to the Muslim world. I'm telling you what I know. 
when that peace treaty was about to be signed between Saudi Arabia and Israel, that's when this war broke out. Because Saudi Arabia is the oil producer to the world. Largest. Look what surrounds it. Egypt, Palestine, Iraq, Iran, Lebanon, surrounding Saudi Arabia saying, try it. Look what we'll do to you. That's why I'm telling Christians, pray for Saudi Arabia. We, Rig is in Saudi Arabia right now. Oh, we're seeding the ground for revival. I'm telling you. That outpouring is coming. Where the Muslim world will be saved. Oh boy, I gotta. We gotta go home. Let me let me get let me get you out of here. Slide 160. Iran's president. This is the old one has suggested that Jesus would return to the world along with the emergence of the descendants of Islam's holy prophet, Imam Mahdi. It is well known that Ahmadinejad saw himself as the chosen one to bring forth the 12th Imam to pave the glorious reappearance of the Imam Mahdi. The suggestion that Jesus and the 12th Imam would return to earth at the same time is something new and quite disturbing. So this is, is something that's not new, sorry, but quite disturbing. So... Ahmadinejad believed that Jesus was going to return with the lost imam. Christians believe that the Antichrist is going to return with a false prophet. Are you catching something? And the only way to bring about this return is we've got to kill the Jews and the pigs. S slide 172, quickly. Let's go there. Slide 172. Look what it says here. Daniel 7, 25. And he shall speak great words against the Most High and shall wear out the saints of the Most High and think to change times and laws. And they shall be given into his hand until a time and time and a dividing of time. Islam is going to come upon the nations and change times and laws. In many nations, they're going to turn some nations into Sharia nations. Next slide. Next slide, please. Let's, let's very quickly. How many believe the mark of the beast is a microchip? That's no, fine. No shame to your game. Let's cast out the lying spirit in Jesus' name. Go, go, go. How many believe it's a, is a microchip? Be honest, it's fine. You watch movies, I watch movies, we all do. What is, what is this? What is the mark of the beast? What is the mark of the beast? I, I, I want to just very quickly, if you don't mind, <clears throat> go to slide 164, just quickly. No, slide 163. Before we get here, look what it says here. Fight the unbelievers around you. This is Quran 9123. Let them find harshness in you. Next slide. Quran 9 5. Fight and kill the disbelievers wherever you find them. Take them captive, harass them, lie in wait, and ambush them using every stratagem of war. Quran 4 9 5. This is why it doesn't matter if you're a conservative Muslim or not. This is why. Look what it says. Not equal are those believers who sit at home and receive no hurt. And those who strive and fight in the cause of Allah with their goods and their possessions, Allah has granted a grade higher to those who strive and fight with their goods than those who stay at home. And to all hath Allah promised good, but those who strive and fight, he is distinguished above those who sit at home by a special reward. Next slide. Look what it says. And I saw thrones, and they sat upon them, and judgment was given unto them, and I saw the souls of them that were beheaded. Which faith beheads? Islam. Beheaded for the witness of Jesus and for the word of God, which had not worshipped the beast, neither image, neither had received a mark. Look, had not worshipped the beast, the image, or the mark. Beast, image, mark. Three things. We're all concerned about the mark. Nobody cares about the beast or the image. Next slide, very quickly. 
I will cast terror into the hearts, Quran 8 verse 12, of those who disbelieve. Therefore, strike off their heads and strike off their fingertips with them. If thou comest on them in war, deal with them so as to strike fear in those who are behind them, that happily they may remember, Quran 8 57. The whole story of Islam is a story of death and terror. In case you never heard it, let me say it boldly here. Islam is a death cult. That's all it is. So Islam is for peace. No, it's a death cult. So you say, holy cow. Okay, let's go back to slide 176 very quickly. Slide 176. Look what it says quickly. And he causeth both small and great, rich and poor, free and bond, to receive a mark on their right hand, on their foreheads, that no man might buy or sell, save he have the mark or the name or the number of the beast. Mark, name, number. Three things. We're all about the mark. We, don't, we forget about the name and the number. Next slide. Here is wisdom. Let him that understand count the number of the beast, for it is the number of a man, and the number is 666. It's not 666. That's a translation. That's the number. How many can see it? Can you see it? The cross swords. Bismillah. Which means, in the name of Allah. And by the way, when you go to jihad, you wear this on your forehead. This is what he saw. It was Aramaic. The Bible was written in Aramaic, not English. So you look and we go, 666. No, that's what he saw. X, L, F, S. Look at the next slide. If one looks at the X, L, F, F symbol and turn it sideways, you see the Aramaic Bismillah, which means in the name of Allah. It's three U's. Next slide, let's look at it. Let's look at it again, next slide. There we go. Can you see it now? Bismillah, that's what he saw. The name of the beast. Bismillah, in the name of Allah. If that doesn't shock you, I don't know what will. Oh my Lord. When I saw that symbol, I was like, dear God. Slide 183. Keep going down. Just keep going. There you go. The first symbol is X. The crossing of the swords in Islam. They wear this during jihad. Next symbol is the Bismillah symbol. And the final symbol is the symbol of the serpent. Slide 191. Just going way down. See there see where they're wearing it? On their foreheads. Wow. Wow. Now what about that no man might buy nor sell? Let's finish with this. This blew my mind. In Isaiah 14, the Bible says, How art thou fallen from heaven, O Lucifer, son of the morning? That's Isaiah 14, verse 12. Lucifer is actually not his name. Lucifer is a translation of his name. Because all the angels have L in their name. They have God. Mike L. Gabriel. Who is Lucifer? Lucifer is a translation. If you check the Hebrew, check it when you go home, Bible.cc. His name is Halel. Which Aramaic is Halal. It means crescent moon. I'm just, let me say, holy cow. Okay. If you look at slide 244, you'll see what's on most of your food products today. Hello. Whatever this spirit is, is going to own the food chain. 
And none of you are going to be able to buy or sell unless you got the mark, the name, or the number of the beast.